Well, hello. Welcome to Q Live. My name is Bill Selleck. Pronouns are he, him. I am director of technology at Hillbrook School. Uh, we're an independent K-8 school up in Los Gatos, San Jose area. Um, and I am so excited that we are here with Diana. We're going to kick off Q Live. Diana, how are you? Good, good. Good, good. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? I'm Diana Naskovska. I'm an assistive technology specialist, formerly a special education teacher here in California. Awesome. You caught me mid-drink. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> and so you are you are presenting at Fall Q. Tell us a, a little bit about that presentation. Um, I'm going to be, I threw my topic behind me. Uh, sometimes it's a mouthful. Google Chrome features <laughs> to help diverse learners. So uh, it's kind of to address that smaller group of kids that aren't able to just jump in and access regular technology. So it's putting in some basic supports, especially on Chromebooks, to help some of these kids that have attention, behavior problems, learning disabilities, are English language learners to give some practical um, and quick strategies for teachers to help them out. Very cool. Um, so I, I noticed it's focused specifically on Google Chrome. Um, when I think of accessibility features, I tend to go to iOS. It might also be other schools, you know, one-to-one -one iPads. And so, the, you know, um, I'm actually presenting on a, a similar thing around accessibility, um, but it's not just specific around like web browsing. So tell us kind of what, what are some of the tricks you get with Google Chrome? What are some of the workflows that you're going to be talking about? There is so much that Google has added in terms of pre accessibility features right now with, I mean, not just voice typing, but it's got the text to speech. It keeps adding new digital voices on there. There's, um, you know, things like enlarging your screen, enlarging your font, enlarging your cursor, but also playing around with the time, the timing of how fast kids highlighting different parts of the screen. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I work with a lot of school districts in California, and I'm so surprised that uh, teachers haven't gotten into that side of Chromebooks, and so many are using Chromebooks. That's why I decided to do um, Google Chrome. So on top of that, I'm also doing a bunch of extensions, so things we can add from the Google Chrome store that um, work like to do to do list apps and timers and white noise uh, little machines that we can add on students Chromebooks to help with various uh, features study skills and such. That's so cool. So for um, people that don't have Chromebooks, does this actually work if you're a Google Workspace school? Are you able to <laughs> add all of those features in still? Yes, you could actually go on your Google Chrome on a Mac or whatever laptop. There are some differences. So there's a few features that aren't available on a like a, a MacBook or, you know, um, a different hardware. But um, most of the stuff we can access, especially the extensions, they're all going to be available. But yeah, there's absolutely. just a small handful of accessibility features um, that are there might not be available if you're not on a Chromebook. Okay, so if you had to pick one, maybe two features just built into Chrome, what's something that a teacher right now, like as they're listening to this in Chrome, what can they click on like in settings to, to make that experience more accessible for their students? I would jump on that, your little gear for settings on a Chromebook or Google Chrome and click on accessibility. And the first few items are just like, enlarge the students um, cursors and also there's a cool thing where you can highlight the cursor as it moves around so kids can see it more easily on the screen i mean those are like just the instant things i would want people to do for students that are struggling these are these are your kids that you know technology is not so easy to access and We've made this assumption that just because kids have all this technology and they've been exposed to like uh, uh, incredible amounts of technology that they know how to find things on their screen or let alone um, manage a keyboard, like most of them don't know how to type. Right, right. You yeah, know, that, that's such a great reminder. And I also um, I'm reminded, I, I remember even way back when um, I was about to say back in the 1900s. That's what my kids call like the, the olden days. I was not doing my credential classes then, but I, I remember in the, the early 2000s, um, you know, just learning about kind of really specific like EL strategies, accessibility strategies. And, and it kept occurring to me, yes, these are, are critical, you know, for our, our English language learners, 
uh, you know, for our emerging bilingual students, but it's also just great strategies for everyone, right? I think so. I think so. Um, it's just, um, and you know, we got to remember as educators, you know, I'm, I'm in my forties. I've, I've, started teaching about 20 years ago. And one of the first schools I worked at didn't even have email. So we as educators, we've had to make this giant, giant digital leap to where we are right now. And how fast if you think about iPads have only been around about 10 years or so. I mean, everything is new. Like, every, I feel like every day we're getting new technology. But as educators, are we as caught up as we can? I mean, that's why I love Q. It's it's just a, how fast in a weekend you can get so much new technology because during the school year, we're still using a lot of traditional methods to engage kids, which drives me crazy, right? And yeah. if you came to a, I'm not promoting Q, but if you came to a Q conference, oh my gosh, even if you attended at one 50 minute workshop, how much more it could bring to what you're providing for students. So besides, I, I should t title uh, my next uh, presentation Beyond YouTube Videos, because yeah. we are a little stuck on YouTube. <laughs> we can be. I mean, it's still a great resource, though, of all the things that you get stuck is. on. That's a pretty I, good thing that you stuck on. Yes. Uh, talk about um, how much YouTube has. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. You know, uh, you mentioned being able to, to learn so much just in 50 minutes. Um, we have a little overlay. I'm going to try it on this fall queue. Are you ready? I'm going to click on it. We're using StreamYard to, to live stream this. We have our three minute mic drops. They're called queue booms. Uh, if you want to see like eight people in an hour, my goodness. Um, oh, that's actually me in the, the bottom right corner clapping. <laughs> cool. That's not from this weekend. Uh, these are fantastic. <laughs> they are actually my favorite way to present my favorite session to go to um, because if it's great, my goodness, that three minutes is just unbelievable. And if it's something that doesn't quite connect with you, then it's three minutes and it's done. So I, I love yeah. that. I think that's a great idea. I didn't, I actually didn't know what those were. So I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah, it's great stuff. Awesome. Well, Diana, thanks for joining us. Let us know how can we find you if people want to go to your session, if people want to connect with you after your session. Um, I'm my session will be live on Sunday at six o'clock and then, um, Diana dot Neskovska at gmail.com is my email address. I also have a website, the assistive tech.com. Um, so yeah, there's not too many Diana Neskovskas out there in the world. If awesome. you Google me, <laughs> <laughs> well, Google her using Google Chrome. <laughs> yeah. We just put a bow on this episode. Look nice. at that, Diana. Look at you. Yes. Great. Awesome. Uh, well, great. Thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, and thank you all for listening to Q Live.